and now switch it to the Mozilla, Mozilla Firefox one. And now what? That's it. That's it? How come I can't see us here? You oh, there that? we are. Oh, Bitch. look. I guess I forgot how this all worked. It's been a while. <laughs> all right, we're live. Live. We are live. Legarius Thomas, Roll Tide Brothers from Sweet Home, Alabama. Feels like I haven't caught the live stream in months. Uh, mute button. Mute. All right. All right, all right, all right. Hey, I'm not used to my screen being actually white. It's usually like the dark background because we're uh, recording in the winter time. Oh, or yes. Or in the winter time, in the night time. In the night time. Well, in honor of Ken not being here, your background is white. Oh. <laughs> and I'm back. And we're back. Welcome to the Freemasons Podcast with your hosts, Right Worshipful Brother George Mudry. Worshipful Brother Joe. Wow, I haven't heard that in a while. I know, right? It's been a little bit. It's been, um, wow, it's been longer than a little bit. It's been since last year, since uh, early December. December. Yeah. Yep. So what have you been up to? Oh, boy. Me and Ken went on a little Masonic vacation, too. We call it a vacation, but it really isn't a vacation. It's been working crazy ass hours he's i don't know reprogramming yeah. his biochips or whatever well he's also our associate grand almoner oh yeah for district three yeah. he took uh took over my spot so let's see what have i been doing since december um well first some big life changes some big things uh -huh. uh, one of the main reason why i haven't been here is uh life got a little tough for a little bit and going through a divorce and hopefully that'll be finalized soon uh, -huh. uh very soon but you know that's it. It's life. Things happen. Uh, thankfully, I've got somebody uh, that I'm with now. Who I right now I'm in the best shape of my life, physically, mentally, emotionally, and all that. So shout out to uh, HR for uh, being there for me. And she and tolerates you. Yeah, she actually more than tolerates me. She actually, uh, for some reason, really, really likes me, and I haven't yet to figure that out. But I am very thankful. Uh, to have her as my best friend and help me get through some of life's most difficult challenges. Let's see. I also ran the New York City half marathon in March, ran my second fastest half marathon time ever. Um, I've been appointed as associate grand marshal for District 3B in Connecticut, which covers uh, my lodge here in Morningstar 47. So. As we said, what AGM is, it's Associate Grand Marshal. It's basically the Robin to uh, the District Deputy's Batman. Yes, and my Batman is a, you ride in a great side car. brother. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fit in a sidecar. <laughs> I'm, I'm, built, I'm built big. Um, You're like uh, Kid Rock's Josie. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Wow, that foul mouthed little midget. That should be you, actually. Three foot nine with a ten <laughs> foot. Never mind. Well, we'll hey, right. <laughs> uh, no, uh, my district deputy is Mark Zernak. Great, great brother. I've been enjoying uh, going around the district with him, uh, attending some Grand Lodge events, galas, and whatnot. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, she does tolerate me. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, good to be back. I, hey, it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a podcast if HR wasn't in the background yelling at me and getting me in trouble. So, but no, it's um, you know, it's been a, a somewhat difficult stretch at times, but there are things that uh, make it all worthwhile, and you got to focus on the the high spots, not the lows, because the highs are are more frequent and much higher than the the lows or lows. So I'm actually in a really good spot right now. Um, really good spot. My head is straight. Like I said, physically, um, I'm in the best shape of my life. So things are good, and good. I'm very happy. That's awesome. Yeah. Good to hear. Um, oh, side note. Uh-oh. I brought you a present up here. Yes. What are we drinking? Uh, Moscow Mules. And why are we drinking Moscow Mules? Because uh, you were all out of Alaskan Fire Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's, that's not why? Oh. No, that's not why. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. As we all know, I'm... I would have to say a, a big ass troll, as everyone freaking knows. Uh, well, if you watch our Twitter feed, you'll see I am a one hell of a troll. Yeah. I love picking on people. So, uh, in honor of how well the war is going over in Ukraine, I uh, got some Moscow mules. Yeah. I mean, I feel bad for them. All they need is a uh, George Washingtonovich. Washingtonovich. <laughs> yes, Washingtonovich. He'll uh, he'll get them all out there. He'll, uh, <laughs> he'll do what he has to do. Don't no, this is actually don't a, tread on Miovich. A quite nice. Um, uh, summer drink, so a nice little surprise. So very nice. Josh very McCray, nice. I thought you were traveling aboard, perfecting your chili recipe. 
You know what, Josh? Screw you. I have actually. I've, I've made a lot of chili, and I have actually perfected it. I've actually uh, learned how to cook quite a few things. Uh, again, thanks to uh, HR teaching me the ropes on quite a few things. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, uh, anyway. Anyway. Um, uh, but no, things are like I've been traveling uh, around the, the district. Uh, yep. Spreading the cement of brotherly love. Uh, more than you expected? Um, no, about what I expected. Probably expected. And I'm, and I'm, it's actually, I'm having a lot of fun because I've been attending a lot of, uh, a lot of family events, not just, uh, you know, Mason's only events, but definitely right. being able to attend events, uh, and, and bringing my lady along with me has made it uh, a lot more fun because uh, she's fully into it. So nice. Very cool. All right. We do have a topic today. Yes, we do. Didn't think we were going to, but, uh. I found something, and it's something that, you know, I went back through, I go through every once in a while, I'm like, did we cover this? Yeah, we covered this. Did we cover this? Yeah, we covered this. And I found one that we've, we've, we've dabbled in, but never actually really covered, and that is the founding father of Connecticut Freemasonry. Yes. General and brother David Worcester. So I'm just going to read from here, and then uh, we'll throw in our own little thing that we know, you know things that we know about David Worcester, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, let's see if you've gotten better at reading in the last five months. No, no, I didn't. <laughs> so this is from uh, thehistoryjunkie.com, um, and it reads, David Worcester, Facts in Biography. David Worcester was an American general who served in the French and Indian War and the American Revolutionary War. He died of wounds sustained during the Battle of Ridgefield, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Cities, schools, and public places were named after him. He has been long, a largely forgotten hero of the Revolution. So if you go to Ridgefield, and I believe it's Route... Oh, God. 30-something, yes? Uh, yeah, 35 or something like that. Um, if you go up into Ridgefield, there's actually markers where it says on the sides of the road, uh, when I used to drive, I would see them all the time. This is where the chief engagement of the Battle of Ridgefield began. So mm -hmm. we'll give a little bio of what was going on in why Ridgefield, Connecticut, was a major battle. Because um, in Norwalk, uh, there's an area... That's called Campo Beach. Yes. And there was a about 3,000 British soldiers that landed there. Uh, and I believe, I could be wrong on this one, but uh, this was after uh, Mr. Um, the one we do not speak of. The, the, the egg guy? The Benedict. Yes. Yeah, the egg See guy. See what I did with the eggs? See what I did there? <laughs> okay. Egg. Uh, he was from Connecticut, and he was leading a campaign through Connecticut. And one of the areas that was a transportation hub, I would say, was Danbury. So what he did was he was marching his, I think it was 3,000 troops from Norwalk straight up into Danbury, and he was going to burn Danbury to the ground. Pretty much straight up to now Route 7. What's Route, yeah, exactly. So along that travels, uh, the Connecticut militia found out about it, and their general was David Worcester. They met at in Ridgefield, and there was a bunch of little skirmishes. There was really no definitive winner or loser uh, to that battle. But ultimately, the British did go to Danbury and burn Danbury straight to the goddamn ground. <laughs> yeah, they really liked burning things. They did. They burnt Fairfield. Well, they also had a too bad they missed my ex-mother-in-law's house. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm guessing she was alive then. Oh my fucking god! What? What? We can edit that Shoot out, right? Shoot your shot, man. We can edit that out, no? <laughs> it's live. Oh, oh, oh it God. Out. Sorry. Wow. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, so uh, they ended up burning Danbury to the ground again. The Continental showed up, tried to fight off the British. They they won a little. They lost a little. But ultimately, it was a stalemate was the how the battle went. Uh, this may tell differently, but I'm pretty smart when it comes to Revolutionary War history. I'm smart. I'm smart. Wicked smart. I know things. All right. So David Worcester was uh, born in Stratford, Connecticut, uh, in a Connecticut colony founded by Thomas Hooker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he entered Yale College at 17, in 1735 and graduated in 1738. Um, in 1739, following an outbreak of war between Britain and Spain, he joined the colonial militia as a lieutenant, but apparently saw no action. In 1741, he was named lieutenant of a ship off the Coast Guard, uh, of the sh Coast Guard, which the colony had established to protect against potential Spanish attack. 
He was later promoted to captain. Damn, so he went from Army to Navy. I'll be damned. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, when the French and Indian War broke out, he Is it served... because he loved semen? <laughs> he served from 1755 to the war's end in 1761, during which he was promoted to colonel and given command of the 3rd Connecticut Regiment. In 1758, his regiment was at the disastrous Battle of Carleon, before uh, before Fort Ticonderoga, um, and in 1759 at the successful capture of Ticonderoga. Oh, right, because it was originally French, wasn't it? I believe it was French. It was originally it was a French fort, and then the Brits took it over. Yes. And then they got caught with their pants around their ankles when uh, the Americans rolled in later. <laughs> yeah. Literally, they I had something for that, but I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to Literally, go. they were all sleeping. Yeah, um, with their pants down. All right, so uh, David Worcester facts. When the American Revolution War uh, broke out with the battles of Lexington and Concord, Worcester was in charge of the militia at New Haven. Benedict Arnold wanted to march up with his militia company in support of the cause, but Worcester tried to deny Arnold access to the militia's weapon stores. <laughs> I wonder why. Arnold's threats were persuasive, and Worcester opened the magazine to him. Magazine is, uh, uh, well, we'll give a little gun history here. That's why, uh, that's why on pistols it's called a magazine because it stores the bullets, not a clip. Thank you. Don't ever use the word clip again. It drives me nuts. Okay. But back in these days, the actual uh, armory we call it was was the magazine. It's where all you kept all the weapons and yep. stuff. Um, Worcester was first given command as a major general of the uh, Connecticut militia companies sent to defend New York City against possible British troop landings. When the Continental Army was established, Worcester was com commissioned as a brigadier general, and his troops were sent to be part of General Philip Schuyler and General Richard Montgomery's 1775 invasion of Quebec. Yeah, that worked out well. Quebecois. Quebecois. Yeah, that worked out fantastic it was some great ingenious there let's just troll through the woods in the winter and then try to take the city ah, that worked well Worcester participated in the siege of Fort John Fort St. John in the fa fall of 1775 and then was given military command of Montreal after that city fell in November wait we took Montreal apparently really yeah but they were French so we gave it back <laughs> Uh, he assumed command of all the forces in Quebec following the death of Montgomery in the Battle of Quebec in the end of 1775. Oh, so they must have took it and then lost it. Uh, Worcester's management of Montreal was marked by difficult relations with the villagers, shocking, and efforts to rein in loyalist activity ended up frustrating even sympathetic locals. He was eventually charged with incompetence over his ten tenure? 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 Tenure, thank you. At Montreal, and court-martialed cleared him. Oh. Ew. That's not so good. No. <laughs> In April 1776, Worcester took reinforcements to relieve General Arnold, who was besieging Quebec City. Worcester was only briefly in command there, as General John Thomas arrived at the end of April. In early May, British reinforcements arrived in Quebec. Quebec. The army was routed and eventually retreated in disarray back to Fort Ticonderoga in July. Uh, Worcester returned to Connecticut, where he assumed command of the entire provincial militia's response for the state defense as the state's first major general. Oh, so he became, like, pretty high head up. honcho. Yeah. Though. Um. British General William Tyron, Tyrion, Ty Tyron, whatever the fuck, some British fucking, whatever, <laughs> launched an expedition in April 1777 to raid the Continental Army supply. Okay, so it was not uh, Benedict Arnold. It was this General Bill Tyron. Um, and uh, they went to go relayed, uh, raid the Continental Army Supply Depot, as I said, okay. in Danbury. On April 25th, about 2,000 British troops landed near Fairfield, which was Campo Beach, as I said, um, and marched inland, reaching Danbury without resistance on the morning of April 26th. Oh, so they made it to Danbury, no resistance. All right. 
They chased away a small garrison, destroyed a large, large number of supplies, and set fire to parts of the town. When Worcester was alerted to this movement, he notified General Arnold, who was visiting his family in New Haven, and set about calling out militia to oppose the action. Arnold took 700 men to set up position in Ridgefield, while Worcester took a smaller detachment to harass the rear of Tyron's column as they returned to the coast. His first major attack caught Tyron by surprise, but he was prepared for Worcester's second attack, which was made as a column near Ridgefield. The Wor uh, Worcester was mortally wounded when the Redcoats unlimbered six artillery pieces. Ugh. That's a shit way to die. Getting yeah. lit up by artillery. <laughs> oh. It's like Kylo Ren when he was shooting at Luke. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so he was mortally wounded when uh, they opened up the artillery and uh, oh, they can't whoop ass. <laughs> he was taken to the Dibble House in Danbury, uh, where he died in May 2nd, 1777. Worcester's final words were, fuck these. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I think they were, uh, if I remember correctly, they were, yes, sister's ass. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Uh, his final words were, I am dying, but with a strong hope and persuasion that my country will gain her independence. Very nice. I like my version better. You like, I like mine, yeah. <laughs> I like it better. <laughs> uh, so we're going to go into the uh, Masonic history of him, but uh, go ahead, Joe. Do you know anything? What do you know about uh, David Worcester? I know that uh, the memorial that's in Ridgefield used to get crashed into at least once a year. Um, because when I managed the Norwalk claims office of the insurance company that I currently still work for, um, we had quite a few people run into it. One was with a Hummer and just like Jesus. trashed the thing. And I think that's eventually a, that's right there on the green, right? It was right in like almost like a roundabout kind of thing. And I right. think they've moved it since cause it got hit so many times, but yeah, I've had to pay for the restoration of that, uh, of that monument quite a few times. So I feel kind of like I have some skin in the game. Um, but no, there, there is that memorial. I do know that, um, one of the lodges down in that area, uh, every year does a recreation of the battle of Ridgefield. Oh, which really? Is pretty cool. Yeah. I know quite a few years ago they were uh, doing it and selling t-shirts for it. It was a big deal cause it was the anniversary not long ago. Um, I got an idea. Yeah. Grow your hair out cause you're a ginger. Oh boy. And do the whole William Wallace scene from Braveheart. I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> And I, I spend a lot of time in the Danbury area now. I haven't, uh, you know, we can do some kind of recreation up there. We won't have the same restrictions as Charles Island, perhaps, and we can, uh, I've got a whole other skit planned for us, too. Uh, so let's get into his Masonic, uh, whatever the hell, his Masonic career, or whatever. Yeah. So he was born March 2nd, 1770, uh, 1711, initiated, raised, oh, it doesn't say, what is it? Oh, for Christ's sakes. Hold on. Let me find a better website. That oh, boy. Sucked. Here we go. Uh, you know who's a good one? Um, give me a second, because I'm looking for... I'm looking for an actual one. It must be on the top shelf, since you can't see it. No, that was some... It was Masonic Shop, which is, you know... All right, so here we go. Got it. And this is from uh, Walsh, Most Warshore Brother Stephen Petrie, Grand Oh. Master. Interesting. This is Grand Lodge of the Month for July 2020. Freemasonry came to Connecticut November 12, 1750, when the lodge at New Haven, now Hiram Lodge Number 1, was chartered by the St. John's Provincial Grand Lodge of Boston. General David Worcester was the first... Uh, oh, that's... Look at that. It's crazy. Look, 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 look. What the hell is that? Freaking wingdings? What the... I don't know. Uh, he was the first most uh, worshipful master of the lodge and later lost his life during the Amer American Revolutionary War. The David Worcester Award is goes... Oh, yeah, we have that too. Because the highest honor can be given to a non-Mason. Why would they give it to a non-Mason if he was a freaking general? Probably just to promote the craft and get involved uh, in the community and to recognize those that... Uh, and my guess is if somebody did something so great and honorable to be given the David Worcester Award that they may be made a Mason on site or honorary Mason. Yeah, I'm getting out of that one too because it goes into 
Yeah, that one we might have to check and see who passed recipients of that. Uh, yeah, I was looking for his dates, but I can't find order. it. But uh, he was born uh, March 2nd, 1711 in Stratford, Connecticut, the youngest of six children. Worcester was raised and educated in the Puritan principles of New England and graduated from Yale College at the age of 28. Many years after, uh, many, after many years of military service, he returned to New Haven, where he received a warrant from the Provincial Grand Master of Massachusetts to establish a Masonic Lodge. On November 12, 1750, Worcester secured the, a charter for the first Masonic Lodge of Connecticut, and the following month presided as Worcester Master uh, at the first meeting of Hiram Lodge No. 1. Worcester continued his military service and led his men through the French and Indian War. When he returned to Connecticut in 1776, he assumed command of the states. So really, he was a uh, Worcester Master, but I don't have much on his Masonic there's not much on his Masonic career. I mean, granted, he was too busy He's fighting a war, fighting a war. So ultimately, it, maybe that was just it. Maybe it, it might have been just... a very brief, uh, very brief period. It's funny how that works because even George Washington, he's got very brief. He wasn't even a Warshall master. Yeah, he was just a brother. Though I think Benjamin Franklin's the only one that went. Up. Yeah, he went he pretty went high up. He pretty was Grand up. Master of Pennsylvania at one point, I believe. Then again, he was kind of fat, and he wasn't really fighting a war. Yeah, so. but he was a hell of a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. He had a good time. He knew how to party. <laughs> he did. That's why he's my favorite brother. My favorite <laughs> founding, right. uh, founding father. He brother. definitely did know how to party, but Yeah. So that's David Worcester. And uh, actually, we got a picture of him over there. Where? I don't feel like getting up. Where the one over, uh, right over on the top of the bar over there. Oh, you can see it on our. Oh, page. you can see it on the screen. Oh, there you go. It's over to the uh, next to the British British flag. It's very white, like Ken. Yes, yeah. Somebody might have actually thought that that was Washington or so, but uh, no, that is actually David Worcester. That's pretty crazy, though. That uh, he got blown up by artillery. Yeah. Ooh. Especially if it was like grape shot. Oh, oh God! Can you imagine? Oh. By the way, funny story about getting taken out by artillery. So I was at this, uh, and Susan was doing a race up in Massachusetts yesterday called Bone Frog, and it's put on by Navy SEALs. And a lot of the obstacles and stuff are military inspired. Uh -huh. Saw a guy freaking take a grenade off the noggin. Like, freaking, because one of the things you had to, like, touch the grenade. It was not live, obviously. But it was like, one why? That would make school, it so much more fun. One of those old school round ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, like, hanging from a rope, and, like, somebody had to hit it. And somehow it came and hit him in the head. Man, it left a knot on his head, like, the size of a freaking baseball. That's awesome. It was freaking huge. <laughs> like, oh, that's why I'm a spectator. But, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. He I think. Hit, he got hit with some heavy artillery. <laughs> I think, personally, what would be fun to set up as one of those races? Do oh, it like boy. a jackass race. Like, combine. Like, with like, monkeys? No, like oh. combine the Spartan races and all that stuff with the movie Jackass. Oh God, I think that. Uh -oh, what uh -oh. Was that? Uh -oh, uh oh, Windows update. Your device will restart. To oh yeah, it's been yelling at us about updating the damn thing. Like that would be funny. I think we should look into that. Like the Laugh Olympics, but with yeah. real people. Oh, and I also have an apology to uh, to oh, send out God. to uh, the Paladins and um, the the widow sons up in New York. The King's Guard. Um, I was. We were supposed to go up there, and uh, to do their. Oh, their. Does that happen already? It, it's this weekend. Oh. But uh, I have a birthday party to go for to a uh, little boy today who turned five. Oh, Eric, my kiddo. Eric. <laughs> Eric. <laughs> was that Cartman? Yeah. <laughs> this combination of the South Park and then. Uh... Throw Mama from the train when she's oh for yeah, Erwin, Erwin. <laughs> um, we should do a little uh, podcast Olympics, a podcast decathlon. How about that? Podcast decathlon. Yeah, we have ten events, or like a ten obstacle kind of all right thing. But what do we do though? I don't know. I, I can't Somebody come up with all the ideas. There, okay, so I was watching Jack. We could, we could do like uh, Revenge of the Nerds where you could drive around a track on a tricycle and you have to chug a beer after every <laughs> lap and see who lasts. That should be the last <laughs> event of the day. I was watching Jackass 4.5 the other day. Yeah. Uh, have you seen it? 
No. Oh, my God. So they have this train that was like a train or something that moved in front of a swing set, and it was called the Swing Set Gauntlet, and they put people on the swing set. <laughs> <laughs> but they had him dressed up in like those blow up like kangaroo yep, things yep. and hippopotamus and like so they're going in front of him as people are swinging and that they, would be really cool they put one dude <laughs> with a yoga ball holding onto the yoga ball and when the dude went to go swing yeah he jumped <laughs> oh god and he so got he went sailed, airborne like oh it was so funny yeah we could go to like an old school playground like could those would be the races like, I gauntlet could... with the the swing set and you got to try to run through and not get hit by somebody in a swing we'll put, we'll put like messner in the swing or yeah you know one of those you know rafferty somebody that if they hit you they're gonna take you out <laughs> we could do that we could do um remember the, that the show spin thing yeah where you, like they put you on and like you can't get off because you'll it spin so fast it spins so fast and the first one the puke loses i think so i think so um so, we could do monkey that? bars with like dog do, poop underneath so do you remember that off. show most extreme challenge is that the one that was kind of based on japanese, a japanese show yes yes, yes. Yeah, with Gila yeah. Douche. Yeah, Gila, Gila Douche. douche. What's the, uh, oh, what's the let's go. <laughs> yes. We could do shit like that. Wolf Brother John Gates, cheater, <laughs> um, was actually uh, very into that show, and that's where I first learned of Gila Douche. Gila Douche, yeah. Oh, man. But that's what we should do, something like that. Where would we hold it, though? Where could it be done? It's got to be at a high school play or a, like an elementary school playground. If no. you're allowed within 500 feet. Liability. Liability. Well, then... I don't know. We'll have to set something up. Is anybody... Kids' backyard. I was going to say, Ken might have one of those play <laughs> things in this. Oh, no, his kids are older, though. I don't know if they have one. Somebody has to have, like, one of those big uh, playground things. You know, the big wooden things with the slide yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, that yeah. type of thing. Dude, funny story. Me and uh, Worship Brother Phil, long time ago, got a bounce house for, like, my sister's birthday or something like that. Well, bounce houses are for kids, right? Well, sometimes. We decided to have a wrestling match in this thing. We upended it. Like, oh, God. Like, we turned it over? It, like, turned the whole thing over with, like, six kids yeah, inside. Yeah, probably exceeded the... The kids are screaming? Probably exceeded the weight limit on that. Uh, I don't remember exactly what happened. Yeah. Somebody got pushed into a wall or something. I don't know. The whole thing went The whole went freaking over. thing went ass over fist. <laughs> Funny shit. No, but definitely. I have no yeah. idea how we even got on this topic. But... Either that or we just sign up for one of these races and have somebody filming as we're going through doing stupid stuff. We could do that. We'll figure it out. If I was to do a race like that, which there's no way I'd be able to finish yeah, it. Not, yeah. No way I'd be able to finish it. But I would do it dressed as Ace Ventura when he was in the tutu oh, at the mental hospital. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. No, those 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 races are hard, man. Uh, I believe you. All right, let's see here. Um, super Spartan, welcome back, Joe. What's your brother Al from Discord? It's not super, it's super. Super, whatever. What's up, big brother Al? So we have six viewers right now. Yep. It's the middle of the freaking day. And by the way, it is hot as hell out up here. Yeah, but it's not as bad as it could be. We've been up here when it was... You remember that time I brought an air conditioner? But anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's that. Yeah, don't forget about stuff like that. <laughs> I really have no idea where that air conditioner went. I, I, it probably got thrown out or it's in Chris's bedroom. Uh... <laughs> We'll have to go inspect. <laughs> hey, what's that box over there? Is that a, hu a Masonic humidor? No. What is that? That's a. It's a like a just a Masonic um, uh, trinkets box. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Is that, I'll oh, show it to you later. Is that Morning Stars? No. Oh. It's mine. Oh, it's very nice. Show it to you later. I like it. You're gonna show me your box. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What? Uh, hopefully, Ken will be up here next time because uh, we have something else to reveal. Joe just actually seen it. Oh, uh, my bad. Oh, wait, the other thing. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah the, uh, what did you say? What did you think? I didn't know if there was something that maybe I ruined the surprise on. No, no, no. The oh, thing okay. I was showing you before. All right, just making sure. It's uh, a new uh, emblem thing that we're putting up behind us. Yeah, and, that should uh, look pretty cool. Yeah, but we're not going to reveal it and uh, talk about it until it's actually done. But you got to see it. It looks pretty cool, so. Let's uh, see, super spot, and it's nearly 2 a.m. down under. Can't sleep, but hey, I finally made it live for the first time in two years. Well, good, to, good to see you, brother. Go, go get some stuff. No, keep listening, and George will read, and you'll fall asleep. You'll be good. <laughs> I'm all done reading. I, I thought, oh. you, I thought they, I actually, this, unfortunately, is a short one, because I thought right there was more. Right up your alley. 
Ah, you it's son of a bitch. I thought away. that was going to be more to David Worcester. Maybe that's why we never covered it before. Because Maybe. I mean, I look through his history. There's not much. Not much. It's literally like, up. Oh, he was born, initiated, raised, and uh, went to go fought a war and got his ass blown up. Like, and then end of story. Yeah, that's it's pretty short. Uh, any listener comment? Anybody on YouTube want to make some comments, ask any questions that we can address for you? Yeah. Otherwise, Open it'll it be a those. relatively short episode today. Yeah. But hey, good to be back. I do actually. While we're waiting for that, there's a couple things I want to uh, want to cover. One, I want to give a, a shout out to. Uh, Wonderful brother John Gates, who uh, found myself in a little potential bind earlier this week that involved a family member, and he rose to the occasion and was at the ready to uh, drop everything he was doing, drive five hours round trip to go help pick somebody up if need be in order to make sure that they were safe, uh, and that they they had accommodations that they needed. So while that ended up not needing to be done. Really appreciate uh, work for Brother John Gates for, um, you know, reaching out and making sure everything was all set. And again, you know, as a brother, he was willing to drop everything and come to the aid of a, a family member of a brother. So thank you. Uh, which kind of transitions into one of the things that I wanted to talk about. And while I've been away, um, you know, as a, a past associate Grand Almoner, uh, working with the, the Grand Almoners program, um, you know, you, you see and you talk to a lot of people that are in really bad situations. Mm. And, you know, sometimes you, you see people not at their best and you try to do what you can to, to make things better. And this one particular instance was uh, uh, a woman. It was in our district, and that's about all I'll say uh, as far as that. But her, her husband had passed away, and she had reached out. To us, and while her husband was still alive, uh, I guess she had reached out to the lodge. And I'm sure there's a lot of the story that I don't know what happened, and I'm not looking to point fingers. But what I will say is that she came away with the feeling of everything that our deceased brother had told her about the craft and the fraternity, as far as helping widows and families. She felt it was all a lie. She right. felt like we weren't there as much as we said we would be, and we made some promises that we never lived uh, lived up to. And she was she was quite upset. And I spent probably the first time I spoke to her, I spent over an hour talking to her, just trying to explain to her hey, that's not typical of the craft. Um, you know, we are always there. We do try to practice what we preach, and it's part of our obligation. And it, it really got me thinking to those Master Masons out there. I'll, I'll ask you a question, and obviously it's rhetorical. You don't need to put the answer in the comments if you're listening. Um, but what induced you to become a Master's Mason, a Master Mason? Think about the answer to that question when you're, you're doing your lecture and your ritual. What induced you to become a Master Mason? And are you doing that? Uh, are you living up to that part of your obligation, especially with widows? and orphans or children left behind are you doing everything that you can because i know that that was one of my big selling points to my family is hey you'll always have somebody to take care of you no matter what the fraternity will be there for you and i've unfortunately seen a few instances where that wasn't the case and we didn't live up to that part of the obligation so think about that part of your obligation think about if you're upholding that part of your obligation or is it just words to you um, so I'm working on some things behind the scenes with our district representative and the Grand Lodge to try to, to work on this and, and make it my mission going forward. So that's probably something that you'll hear me talk about anytime I'm on the podcast and just, uh, just as a reminder. And when, when you're next weekend, it's Memorial Day weekend, um, think about it. Think about that question. What induced you to become a Master Mason and, and think about whether or not you're upholding that obligation and if you feel like you're not go get out there and do something make a phone call go check on go check on a widow go check on somebody's family see if they're okay it doesn't take a lot sometimes a phone call and just them knowing you're there and having your contact is enough so i'll get off my soapbox on that what's your brother joseph schultz I oh throw boy the imagine <laughs> my disappointment <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nathan, George did it because they told him it would make him grow as a person, and he misunderstood what they meant. Ah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, <that's> it. <laughs> it wouldn't be the podcast without some uh, some comments on, on something serious. That is a good one. All right, that is a good, good one. All right. All right. 
that's a that's that's a good one. And yes, they did say I was going to grow as a person. And uh, and when I when I read Joe Schultz's child. comments, I hear it in my head as uh, Jackie Gleason smoking in the Bandit. That's the uh, that's the <laughs> accent that I'm hearing when I read that. Um, yeah, no, all the points you made are are very good. And tr- truth be told, it's it's kind of something that gets lost along the way, especially you know, unfortunately. Uh, we get lost a lot in our ranks and officers and, and we, you know, again, it's human nature to want to move up the, the pecking order mm-hmm. and do something bigger and better. But the, and unfortunately, sometimes when that happens, as you move up that, that chain of command, if you will, uh, you start to forget about the original reasons of why you joined, you know? Yeah. And there is no rank higher than that of a master mason in our fraternity so remember that and your obligation of that degree is the most important obligation and just remember remember what you promised to do remember what you took an obligation to do and not saying you have to go out and do it every day um but get out there and do it get out there and do what's right so i got a question for you yes Next time you come up here, yes. I think we need to have a. Uh, I think we need to have a good, solid debate. Oh boy! On when is it okay to violate or disregard your Masonic obligation? They can never be repudiated or laid aside. So never. <laughs> there it is. No, but I got I got a couple things. That and I'm once like, taken, and I'll leave I it at that. I understand what you're saying, but never, if, never. Okay, it'll be a good debate because I'm just going to keep saying I'll keep reading the definition of never every time you come up with the point. <laughs> Listen, and I'm not I'm not it's not a debate on me saying, "Oh yeah, I could lay it down." It's more of like I'm going to throw you questions and be like, oh, "Well, what if this happened?" Okay. You're going to give me some hypothetical I'm gonna give you, I'm scenario. Gonna give you a, a hypothetical scenario and uh, at what point is it okay to I'm going to go with all. never. All right. Because well. it's n- and once taken. Well, never. Well, mm-mm, okay. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. I got what you're saying. Mm-mm, well, mm-mm. But I want to have this deb- this conversation with you and the heartless android that that's over there because okay. he has no feelings. So. Wait, does that make him <laughs> Judge Judy for the episode? <laughs> no, I not Judge turn Judy. Over my word? Do I have to derobe? There are some oh. situations that I, I've thought of. And again, these are things I think of. It's what I do literally okay. all day long is I think of things to talk about on the podcast and in different subjects and topics and stuff. And, and I th- you know, there was a couple yeah. scenarios where it's like, huh, Okay. I wonder, you know, okay. I, I'll, I, I will entertain those. Right. I will entertain those. Are you not entertained? <laughs> but it's still going to be never. Uh, let's see here. Um, it's, it's altruistic. altruistic. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. You got it. It's altruistic to give without expecting anything in return. That's one reason. Yeah, that's that's our craft. So, you know, like I said, give. Uh, I'm gonna leave that one alone from oh. George Schultz. I had something. No, no, he didn't say anything. I was. Oh, okay. I had a smart ass return, but I'm not gonna. Okay, I was looking I'm up. I'm gonna there. leave it alone. <laughs> uh, Super Spotting's leaving. Go to work. Oh, that's. Is it? Does that mean it's Monday there? You. He said it's two a.m. Yeah, but uh, like Monday, right there ahead of us. Yes. They're ahead of us. Yeah. Yeah. So it's Monday morning. You poor bastard. Go to work. Yeah. At least we have the rest of the day. Pretty much. Speaking of which, I ain't got much left to talk about. No, I'm good. So I've said what I had to say. We're going to, and again, I apologize to the listeners. I thought David Worcester was going to have a little bit more baggage to him because okay. I was going to cover his uh, military career and then go into his Masonic career, and it's literally two lines. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? No, okay. all, all good. And again, I'll close by saying, you know, shout out again to uh, Worshipful Brother John Gates for being brotherly this time, even though he cheated in the chili cook-off competition. And uh, shout out to HR Mama Bear for her completion of the Bone Frog race yesterday, which she did excellent in. And I'm very impressed and thoroughly proud of her. So, so I have a question. We're yes. gonna we're gonna revisit this one more time. I'm not trying to get your blood boiling. I'm not trying oh to do boy. this. I want to understand the situation. What you're saying is, hey, you're at the chili cook-off. You were in the lead. You yes. left, went to the bathroom, and came back and lost. Yeah, so here's what happened. So like, I'll recap this. I'll keep recapping. So what this. you're saying is like uh, 200,000 votes ended up just was, being cast while you were in the bathroom. In a smaller scale, yes. Yeah, yeah. It so was, what I'm doing there, right? Let's see. There's 30 people there. There's 30 people there. 
I'm ahead by three votes. I come out of the bathroom. There's 32 people there, and I'm down by five. So it's almost as if, like, you went to sleep and then woke up the next morning. And, then and right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, wait. There must have been some absentee ballots, I guess, for the, for the cook off. There, there must have been. There yeah, there are mailings. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of what happened. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I yeah. just thought of that the other no, day, though. No, but that's exactly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> must, All right. It must have been the liberals. <laughs> anyway, for the free maze, hey, first off, hey, it's great having you back. Hey, it's good to be back. Good. It's good to be back. So uh, looking forward to the next one because I'm going to really grind your gears with the next one. It's my plan. Oh, I bet you. It's going to be a slow boil to get Joe to finally... Maybe we should do an episode on what grinds our gears. <laughs> we should. Oh, wait. We did that. No, and then we did Well, we kind of did, and then somebody else copied it. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'll still throw those barbs. I don't care. <laughs> I got nothing to anyway, lose. Anyway, for the Freemasons podcast, I'm right Worship Brother George Mudry signing off. Worship Brother Joe signing off. Have a good afternoon, Have everyone. Have a good afternoon. You want to uh, switch over to Mozilla? Yep, and then just go to where it says stop recording. Bye, bitches!